Well, my name's Elizabeth Barsham, and I'm a painter. I work primarily in oil paint, mm -hmm. and I've been doing it for probably about 30 years. I'm not going to count at the moment. And uh, my work, I generally describe it as Tasmanian Gothic, mainly because people ask me, keep asking what the category is, and I have to think of one. Well, I've called this exhibition Personal History, and it's pretty much a review of work I've done over, well, probably about 30 years. Um, this painting here behind me, the bridge, was hung in the Blake Prize exhibition in 1987. Uh -huh. So it's yep. about a year older than that, so you can, do the, so you can do the arithmetic. Way, way, way back when, I was working as an owner-driver courier in Melbourne. I was driving a taxi truck around the suburbs, delivering whatever. And I spent a large amount of time sitting in a traffic jam looking at the freeway overpass in Hoddle Street. And after a while I got to the stage where I thought, well actually there's some quite interesting shapes in there and I quite like that curve there. And if you looked along underneath all the piles under the bridge, it looked like a bit of a cement forest. Mm. So I decided I'd go off and have a go at drawing it. And subsequently I think I spent two or three days doing lots and lots of long pieces of string and set squares and rulers and things, doing mm -hmm. a very accurate uh, perspective drawing of it. And at the end of that, I decided it looked absolutely horrible. So I threw it away and drew it freehand, and it looked a lot better then. Uh, well, this has got the, um, obviously the freeway bridge in the middle of it, but I was thinking of a bridge as being a connection, and it connects opposite things, you know, like the opposite sides of a river is the obvious thing. It's a link between ideas, and when I, my original idea, as far as I can remember, was that I was thinking of the city as being a centre of order and calm, and regulation and everything in its place and nicely organised in horizontals and verticals and that sort of thing. In the middle of the absolute chaos of nature where everything just curls around and goes, goes its own way and goes in all sorts of different directions. Of course people have interpreted it differently in various different, various different times. So I suppose you could think of it as being the city you know, sort of spewing out all these tortured souls or you'd look at it from the opposite direction of it. You know, dragging all of nature into itself and consuming it. Mm. Yep. So there's no there's no set way of uh, interpreting any of my paintings. All of them, I deliberately set up situations where I'm making a statement, and it's up to the viewer to interpret it. And usually these statements are ambiguous enough so that you can come at it from two or three different directions. These are the sort of um, contradictions that I like. I'm, I look for contradictions. And yep. that's what I like to put in my paintings, is find contradictory ideas and then blend them into an image. Probably the easiest one to talk about would be one called The Fence. Mm -hmm. Now, I painted that in 2002. Um, when I painted it, there was a lot of discussion and argument and so on about asylum seekers. Mm. Okay. And so this is the idea of what that fence there, so is the fence there to keep these people out? or is it to protect other people from them and it's really just again I suppose it's the opposite of the bridge the bridge is the connection the fence is a division mm. and the interesting thing about this one apart from the fact that it's still topical mm -hmm. all these years later and it will probably remain topical because we always seem to have situations where people are coming from point A to point B and the people that are at point B don't really want them there well, well the next one I'd like to discuss is called The Caravan Moves On it's um, the most recent painting in the exhibition, but it's a very, very early idea. It's something I've been drawing for years and years and years, and I've been always been interested, for so no real reason I can explain, in paintings of processions. You know, you look at ancient Greek friezes with the whole procession of people and animals moving along. <laughs> but the, other, the painting I was really thinking of when I painted this was one that's in the Musée d'Orsay, by um, Cormon, and it's called um, The Expulsion of Cain. The idea itself of this procession of creatures has just been recurrent in my drawings mm. for years and years and years. I've just never actually got around to putting it on canvas, and so I now finally have. And so, again, it's totally open ended, it's ambiguous. It's basically a lot of people moving from point A to point B, and they're doing it because they've eaten everything here and they're going to look for fresh pastures. Are they being driven out of their home? Or are they just, you know, searching for something further on? So you can look at it as being an allegory of life if you want to, you know, we're always searching and moving on and looking for something better than what we already have. 
One of the things that interests me is alienation and the fact that everybody has their preconceived ideas of what things look like and what they ought to look like and things usually don't. So if you start to look at things from a slightly different point of view, getting away from all your preconceived ideas, you frequently find there's something completely different from what you originally thought. And apart from the fact that it's fun to distort figures and play with fanciful shapes and so on, that's quite a serious point in my work, is, trying to, is exploring that idea of things being other and alien and different, mm -hmm. and not being what you expect. So, well, the next one's The Suburban Dream. I've had a bad habit over the years when they still used to broadcast parliamentary broadcasts. I'd be listening to them while I was painting. And it was yet another one of those situations where one politician was accusing another politician of ruining the economy. And at that stage, the suburban dream of owning your own home has become a nightmare, I think was the phrase that was being used. And I thought, OK, I'll paint the suburban dream. So the idea of it being twisted into something totally misshapen, impractical, and out of reach uh, was ba the basis to that one. Now, the way I constructed that painting was a method I use. Um, I think that's the only one in this particular exhibition that I've done. But every so often, I have something that I know is a complicated, has a lot of complicated shapes and construction, and I'll do a collage. So I'll just tear up various magazines and whatever, stick them all together, find the shapes I want, rearrange them, that sort of thing. Often, they're found images that are in there that are useful. Mm -hmm. They found shapes that I hadn't expected, or and this sort of thing, and they all become part of it. Then I'll base the, I'll probably do two or three sketches, sometimes a gouache painting based on my collage, and from that I'll make up the oil painting. Mm -hmm. But as I said, it's just the idea is this, um, it's this dream, this sort of impossible dream of finding a little nest in the suburbs. If you want to be an artist, you really have to treat it like an ordinary job. You know, if you'd go off to the office nine to five or whatever it is, well, that's what I try to do. Now, my hours are fairly irregular, but I do try to paint for eight hours a day. Now, that eight hours might be, you know, 10 to whatever. It might be 10 p.m. to whatever. It just depends on when I can get a chance to get into the studio because life does tend to impinge on my painting time. But uh, I generally, and this is part of the reason, I keep a logbook. So I clock on when I walk into my studio and I clock off when I leave. And that has two, uh, two advantages. First of all, I know that I've spent eight hours in the studio, so it keeps me honest. But also, I'm invariably being asked, how long did it take you to paint that? And I know. <laughs> yes, I, yes, so each painting, I've, I've just got a page in a notebook, you know, with the title yep. of the painting, the dimensions, what pigments I've used for it, if I've done anything funny preparing the canvas, what type of canvas I've used any of those sort of, any of the technical information that I might need to refer back to if the painting needs repairs later or if I want to alter something. Mm -hmm. you know, I want to know what oils I used on it and so on because these things have changed my mind and try out new techniques every now and then. Um, it's not at all uncommon for me to come back to an, to an unsold painting and look at it and think, oh, well, that would be better if, and then repaint part of it. In fact, several of the paintings in this exhibition, that's happened to them. And I think a couple of them got touched up just at the last minute before I brought them into this show. I'm very fussy about what I let out of the studio, so unless I'm, I won't say 100% happy with the painting because I never am, but if I don't feel that the reworking has improved the painting, well, it doesn't go anywhere, it stays in the storeroom, and I might revisit it, you know, a few years later. I've had paintings that are um, years old, you know, 10, 15 years old sometimes, that I've fished out and said, oh, actually, that wouldn't be a bad painting if I just did this, that and the other to it, so I do this, that and the other to it. All the paintings in this exhibition, um, it's a, as I said, it's a review exhibition, so they come from all sorts of different periods of my painting career, and looking at them now, I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how good they look, and I would really, really, really like people to take some of them home with them and really enjoy them in their own rooms, because um, they will certainly give you something to talk about with your neighbours and I'm constantly being told that the longer people look at my paintings the more they see in them and the more they enjoy them. <laughs>